You're watching video 110 and it's been a bit since we've talked about the real estate market in terms of the data. So today we're gonna to talk all about foreclosures. I'm just kidding, we're talking about data. I know there's a bunch of you out there that really like to keep up with the data and uh, stay informed as what's happening in our market. So today's video is gonna be really special for you guys because what I'm going to be doing is since January is now closed out and we are into the first quarter of 2020, I'm gonna compare January of 2020 with January of 2019 and compare everything from pricing to days on market to uh, inventory and looking at the supply and demand different um, charts on there and we're gonna talk all about it. So if you're ready, I'm just gonna go ahead and jump right in because we have a lot to cover. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the median price of new listings entering the market. We actually saw a 1.4% decrease of new listings that entered during January of 2020 than those in 2019. All this is really telling us uh, it's that basically new listings that are hitting the market are a little bit better priced than they were in January of last year. This next chart is showing all for sale listings and demonstrating the median price. When you look at a January 19 and January 20, there's a marginal difference demonstrating that we're right at about $305,000 for the median asking price of for sale listings in Brevard County. And something I wanna clear up, if you have looked up anything online or maybe you get our Space Coast Association of Realtors um, blasts about the market dynamics, they're a little bit different than the way that I do mine. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm searching countywide for single family homes priced between 200 and $600,000. Effectively what I'm doing is I'm removing the outliers and giving us the most dynamic and informative uh, group of numbers that we can work with versus looking at everything from $40,000 all the way up to $8 million. You're going to have a lot of skewed numbers. So I kept it very tight where about 80% of the county are buying in between this gap. Hope that helps. I like looking at this graph because it shows the median price point of properties that went under contract. Now, if you look at January of 2020, you'll see that that median price is 290,000. We know the median asking price of property that is currently listed is 305,000, which is a 5% difference, um, which I thought was really interesting. And that's why this is important and worth sharing because it's showing that properties list at X and they have to reduce about 5% before they actually go under contract. So this is a pretty important graph to monitor. This is another really important one to monitor because it shows the sold price and it gives you the median amount of what people are willing to pay. So when looking at January 19 and January 20, this is showing that people were willing to pay 10% more for property in 2020 than they did in January of 2019. Now this could be impacted by the amount of supply out there, which we're about to get into now. New listings that entered the market in January of 2020 were down 3.6% than those that were new to the market in January 2020. 2019. Now when looking at all for sale listings on the market, we were down at 19.2% in January 2020 versus January 2019. This right here is showing that supply was down pretty significantly. This chart tracks properties that went under contract. And as you know, because the last screen that we just talked about that for sale listings were down, but this one is showing that under contract properties were up 20.5%. So supply was down, but demand a uh, huge increase on that, which now we're gonna talk about what actually sold. Typically January is one of the slower months throughout the calendar year, uh, but this graph here is showing that we had a 13.6% increase in sales uh, for, for units of real estate in January of 2020 than we did in 2019. So another amazing chart showing that demand exists. Now this is a chart that I haven't shared with you in the past only because it can sometimes be a little bit more complicated to understand. So right here is showing the month supply of inventory also known as MSI also known as absorption rate. So essentially what absorption rate is is it takes all of the sales and it divides it into all of the inventory out there and it basically shoots out a number of how long it would take for a current market to sell all of the available listings and it kind of gets a projection going out there. It's much different than uh, days on the market but this graph does show both. So I wanted to show you that month supply of inventory or absorption rate is down pretty low. And this is the largest thing that people look at when they're talking about the market as far as supply is concerned. Now when looking at this graph, you'll see a 39.4% decrease from MSI of sold inventory in January of 2019 and January of 2020. This took us from a 6.5 absorption rate all the way to a 3.9. And anyone that understands market calculation and understands how to read, uh, absorption rate, they know that a 3.9% is really leaning towards the seller side. And when you hit the six and a half, that's more of a buyer's market because inventory is higher. So buyers have more options and um, 
the rest is just a supply and demand nature. But here it's shown that we had a pretty big decrease and I think that is worth noting uh, to, to be really um, informed about and to pay attention to because if these numbers continue to go down, it's gonna be a very interesting market in 2020. All right, all right, that was a lot of fun data to go over and I just wanted to share with you my three biggest takeaways from doing all this research and putting this video together for you. Takeaway number one, that sold price uh, when looking at January of last year, January of this year was up 10%. I felt like that was a really great sign of how 2020 is going to um, continue to grow. Number two, uh, for sale listings were down, it looks like almost 19.2%. Uh, I felt like this was very interesting, uh, even though I know that January and going into February typically are slower months in terms of inventory at 19% that's a pretty significant reduction so I'm curious to see if the market is going to pick back up and and when and uh, most analysts do predict that March to April time frame of being almost the peak of when listings enter in the market and then number three even though that for sale listings were down 19.2% I thought it was very interesting that contracts were up 20.5% in the month of January 2020 when looking at 2019. Um, all these indicators are looking pretty good for 2020. It's showing that inventory is starting off a little bit slower, but the demand is just cranking in. And if you talk to anyone on the Carpenter Kessel Homestone team about this, they're going to tell you that we feel the pressure. We feel that this year is going to be pretty incredible, uh, even though the last few years have been strong. 2020 is just looking really great as far as all insights and everything that we looked at today. So hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know if you have any predictions about the 2020 market when looking at Brevard County. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you have any questions, leave them on the video. Other than that, you guys know the drill. I'm done talking and I will talk to you and see you next Monday.